Isn't that right? Amen. Hold on to his unchanging hand. I'm thankful God doesn't change. Yes. Amen. I'm thankful that God is the same yesterday, yes. today, yes. and forevermore. Yes. He doesn't change. God has given me reason to hold on yes. to his hand. Isn't that right? Yes. When you don't know who else to talk to, when you don't know where else to turn, you can yes. still turn to he who is unchanging. Yes. Thank God for an unchangeable God. Yes. The Hebrew writer says God is a God who cannot lie. Yes. And I'm thankful that we have a God in uh, many people will tell you one thing and turn their, turn back on their own word. They'll lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, the Hebrew writer says God cannot lie. It's impossible for him to lie. As a matter of fact, he says there didn't even a, you don't even have to guess about it, question your, question it. You don't have to uh, concern yourself whether or not what God says is true. He says the reason you can depend on an unchangeable God is because he cannot lie. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful Amen. for God. I'm thankful Amen. for God that he's given me reason to hold on to his Amen. unchanging Amen. Uh Just a few, just remember our, uh, our men's and women's empowerment will kick off March the 16th. Um, and that'll be on a Saturday, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday morning, they'll have the flyers, they'll have it put up on a social media and on our page um, so that you'll have those dates. So, but we're gonna kick off our men's and women's empowerment. Um, we started that a while back and of course, the pandemic saw otherwise. Yeah. And so now that we're back in full motion, we're gonna start kick back off our women and men's empowerment. Let me just say to you, it is just that, a women and men's empowerment. Yes. Amen. 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 It's not a women and men's beat down. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't for you to get in here and talk about sister so and so and brother so and so. Yeah. 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 It's an empowerment. It's an empowerment. It's to encourage one another. Yeah. It's to build up one another. Yeah. 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 It's to let you go through enough Hades in the week to come in here and get beat down. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It is a men's and women's empowerment. And what we want to do is also we encourage you parents because we've got a breakout session for our young men and women. That's all right. Amen. 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 All right. We have, we're going to have classes for our young men and women. Now you take your children everywhere. Yes, sir. Now it's time to take them to get some Amen. Jesus. Amen. We, we take them to ball games. We take them to the birthday parties, to the movies. We take them everywhere. Now it's time to take them to get some Jesus. Now don't come blaming the church when little Johnny gets to bowing up at you. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's it. When he when he thinks he got more, more muscle than his daddy in right. the credible hulk. Yeah. When he get the he getting the like he getting ready to do that, yeah. you better start bringing him to get him some Jesus early. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying to you? Yes, oh my goodness. Yes. I hear you. I hear you. May the Lord bless you. But our Muslims of Power will be March 16th. Our Pillars of Faith Health Fair will be March the 23rd. We want you to come out and, and because that it is a power pack a health clinic and it will be a informative, it will be educational, it's going to be a blessing to you. So there have there'll be vendors who will be out to um to uh to share with us the things that they have. So we want you to come out. And really, church, it's a it's a promotion of good health. Amen. I mean, man, Amen. we 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 sometimes as a people are the last to get our health in order. Amen. We are many times we wait until we're laying in the hospital bed to figure out that I need to start eating right, Amen. or I need to start checking my blood sugar right and all of that yeah. stuff. But well, why don't we start being proactive to do that right now? Amen. So that health fair is going to do that for you. Um, and you, shoot, my I didn't know my Brianna didn't know she would end up with lupus. Oh, right? And so it comes after her pregnancy. Now she's diagnosed with she's having all these symptoms. Yeah. But man, what would what, what it have been had she never gone to, right. to the doctor? Right. So here's the thing. We all need a health check. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we do. Yeah. We need a health check. So that stuff will be on our website. It will be on our, um, 
on our flyers. We'll have it all for you. But we want you to come and support that. Yes. Um, and, and let's bless each other in that regard. All right, now, stand with me for the reading of the word. Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, we're just going to get one verse. Hebrews chapter 11. Okay. What well, if you're giving me this announcement and while I get up here? My, oh, my mind is preaching this word. I hear you. I hear you. Man, the last thing, like, y'all giving me all, they flooding me with these announcements. Okay, okay, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel, had, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, yeah, yeah, yeah. through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testifying about his gifts and through faith, through, though he is dead, he still speaks. Now, here's the part I want to, here's where I'm going to give you the title of this sermon. He says, God testifying about his gifts and through faith, though he's dead, he still speaks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you may be seated. I want to talk to you from this subject. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, can you hear me now, uh, All right. before I get into this, let me for, let me say this last announcement that they gave to me. I want to say thank you to all who participated in the Black History Month program. Give right. yourself a proud of this program. Oh man! Listen, our seniors ain't something else. <laughs> look, they, look, you can't tell them. That they ain't, they ain't in a fashion show. You hear me? <laughs> well, they got in there and got the prancing around and their outfits and their gear, and they had a joyful time. And we enjoyed them as well. We enjoyed everybody. We had our college students who uh, played her instrument. We had uh, many participating, just a whole gamut of people, even those behind the scenes that were working. We want to say thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, listen, we're, we're, God has truly blessed us with some very gifted and talented people. Um, and so now, can I preach? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, he says, though he is dead, mm -hmm. yet he speaks. Can you hear me now? Oh, the Hebrew writer has just told us, and you remember we have started a series, this series on uh, the power of an a expectant faith. That is the power. There's power in a faith that's pregnant with expectancy. Uh, the, 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 the fact that our faith, we live a life of faith, the Hebrew writer says, we, we put faith, it's the substance, the assurance, it's the bedrock, the foundation of what we hope for. There's your expectancy. When the word hope, when he talks about what we hope for, he's talking about the very things we hope for down the line. That is future. But not only are we hoping for what's going to happen down the line, we are hoping uh, based on God's promises. The child of God has faith in what God promised. Not only in what God promised, but what God uh, will give in terms of assistance to his people. You can hope, not wishful thinking, it's not luck, it's not by chance, but God uh, has given us his promise and he says the way you have access to his promise is by your faith. Now you remember, we talked about how the Hebrew writer uses the word faith. He uses the word faith not simply by just believing or uh, 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 putting trust and confidence in a thing. But he also uses this word faith as a title deed. That is, we've got title, a title deed to whatever God has promised us. Y'all looking at me funny. You know what a title deed is? Now, do we have to review all over again? No, 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 Y'all better say amen. The title deed uh, is when you have rights and ownership to something or a property, right? He uses the word faith as a title deed, which means your faith is so strong that whatever God promised, you, you operate, you live as if you have it in reality right now. Right now. That's faith, y'all. That, that's, that's faith. That, that even though I may not have it, that's why you're going to say it's the evidence of things not seen, right? So when he talks about having faith and it being the evidence, that word evidence is a legal term that comes, that carries the idea of you bringing evidence in a court of law. Right. 
and you know that that evidence will do one or two things. It will either convict you or it will exonerate you. Yeah. Well, he uses evidence here. He says, now, when you are in this court of law, he says the evidence uh, that, that is stacked up will be upon your faith. Your faith will be evidence that there is something behind the unseen realm, all right? In, in other words, he'll go on to say that the way you know a person has lasting, saving faith is when they can see what's visible and realize that there is something invisible that created it. Right. Are y'all following what I'm saying? He says, so this faith, man, this faith is so strong that this faith sees what the naked eye cannot see. Right. Y'all with me? Right. Yeah, yeah. That's why, that's why it's important that you can't tell everybody what your goal, your dreams, and aspirations are. Mm -hmm. Because chances are, if you ask 10 people, I've got a vision to create this. I've got a vision for a business. I've got faith that I can create this. You ask 10 people, I guarantee you two of them will celebrate your vision, and the other eight will speak negatively as to why you shouldn't do a thing. You know why? Because they can't see what faith has allowed you to see. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, but he doesn't stop there. He said, now, I'm not convinced that you are really uh, buying into this faith thing. I'm not convinced the Hebrew writer would suggest that you have really grasped what faith really is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call some people to the witness stand so that you can now ask them what faith really looks like. I'm going to call a man by the name of Abel. And I want you to look at Abel. I'm going to put Abel on the witness stand. And I want you to listen, ask Abel some questions. Let's look into Abel's life. Abel, have you seen God? No. Abel, do you believe in God? Yes. Well, how so? Because I offered sacrifices that were accepted to him. Now, when you understand, in order to understand Abel, he says he offered a better or a real, a good, better translation would be he offered a more acceptable sacrifice to God. Right? right? And then his sacrifice was more accepted than Cain. Now, we got to ask a question. Why was his accepted and Cain's rejected? I need to, before we get into this, I need you to, to, to tell you that many people take the position that Cain's uh, sacrifice was rejected because it wasn't an animal or blood sacrifice. Nowhere in Genesis chapter 4 does it say that. No, right. What you have is two men coming to offer sacrifice. Right. Both came and within that sacrifice they came to worship God. Right. But only one worship and sacrifice was accepted. Yeah. That's right. Your question is why? Right. <laughs> Yeah, you hear that right? Both came before God. Right. Both offered sacrifices to God. Right. And both came to worship God, but only one person sacrificed and coming to God and worship was accepted by God. Amen. Well, oh, we will have to figure out why. Yeah. Right? And, and I know that it wasn't God wasn't punishing Cain because he offered from the ground. Because in the Old Testament, I'm going to show it to you, that God not only required animal blood sacrifices, but he also required cereal and grain, fruit of the ground sacrifices. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So there, yeah, so we got something going on. But now in order to see this, you got to come back to Genesis chapter 4 with me. Y'all mind traveling back with a little bit? Look at Genesis chapter 4. Now in Genesis chapter 4, now we send me, you got a mic, we got the mic. Somebody gonna have to do some reading too, because we gotta move quickly. Now in Genesis chapter 4, I want to I want you to notice what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 4 concerning these two men, Cain and Abel. Now, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, talking about Adam, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have gotten a man child with the help of the Lord. And again, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. And Abel, watch this, was a keeper of the flock. That's his occupation. Right. Cain was a tiller of the ground. That's his occupation. Right. God doesn't require you to offer sacrifices or gifts 
uh, that's out of your means of giving. Right. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. So he, he says, he was a tiller of the ground, and so it came about that in the course of that time, Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Mm -hmm. And Abel, on his part, also brought the first lanes of his flock and their fat portions. That's right. Hmm. Now underline that. When he says Abel brought the first lanes and the fat portions, underline that. That's important. Yeah, yeah. Now notice how he describes their sacrifice. So Sister Hagel, he says, Abel brought the first lanes and the fat portions of his flock. But then he says, but Cain simply brought the fruit of the ground. The fruit of the ground. Yeah. That's it. Because <laughs> y'all ain't catching it, man. Yeah, they Abel brought the first lanes and the fat portions of his sacrifice to God. Yeah. I'll speed it up for you. Whenever you brought, whenever God required an animal sacrifice, he required you to give the very best yeah, of your right, flock. Right, right. Right. And Follow what I'm saying? Fat, Sister White, also symbolized the food of God. It was the best of God. So whenever they offered sacrifices and it was an animal sacrifice, they would also, especially when it came to the peace offering, not only would they slay the animal, not only would they put that animal on the altar, but they would take the fat and they would offer that fat on the burnt offering to the Lord and it went up to God as a sweet aroma. Amen. So fat symbolized the best. I'm going to prove it to you. And so what, he, what you find is Abel is giving the best of God's blessings from him to him. Right, right, right. He says, but Cain just simply gave fruit of the ground. Right. Which meant when you offered fruit or cereal and grain sacrifices, you couldn't just go into a foreign field and pick up a few vegetables and some things. No, no, no. When God expected that type of offering, he wanted you to cultivate the land. You had to produce the fruit or the cereal and grains from your own hand. And then you had to grind it and prepare it and make it ready to eat before you offered it to the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? In other words, there was a thought process put in place before you came to God. In other words, you had to have a proper heart when you offer these sacrifices to God. Without a proper heart, it would signify that you've got an improper faith. Because you have an improper faith, it suggests that God is not going to uh, accept your sacrifice. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Watch it, watch it. So he says, he says, so this, this, this tiller of the ground, he brought of the fruit of the ground. Abel brought of the firstlings of his flock. Now, Sid, are you ready to read a little bit? Yes, I am. You sure? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, we, we got to move fast now. Look at when, when we talk about it, uh, now. When you got you, in order to understand these two men and their sacrifices, we got to kind of look a little bit at the old law, the law of Moses. Now look at Leviticus chapter three. See, right. Leviticus chapter three. Y'all got to turn there quickly now. Leviticus chapter three. Look at verse number nine. I think it is Leviticus chapter three. We're talking about the fat and the animal sacrifice. Under the animal sacrifice, and in particular, the burnt offering. Now, so as Sidney's turning there, the animal sacrifices, I believe, points to all of the animal sacrifices: the sin and trespass offering, day of atonement offering, and the and the uh, the burnt offering, as well as the peace offering, because it required an animal to die in place of the worshiper. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. Now, in Leviticus chapter 3, let's see what how God viewed the fat portions of the animals. Leviticus chapter 3, verse 9 says verse what? Nine. And he shall present. He shall present. From the sacrifice of the, of the fellowship. Uh -huh. Offering, uh -huh. An offering made by fire to uh -huh. Yahweh. An offering made by fire to who? To Yahweh. Or to, God. to God, right. He must remove its fat. He must remove what? Its fat. Its fat. The entire fat tail, uh huh, uh, near the tailbone, uh huh, and the fat coming the inner part, yeah, and all the fat 
that is in the universe. Yeah. The two kidneys. Yeah. And the fat that is on them. Uh, uh huh. Which is on the line. Yeah. And he must remove the load on the liver in addition to the kidneys. Keep going. The priest shall turn it into smoke on the altar mm -hmm. and as a food offering made by fire to God. Wait, 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 wait. It's, so he removed the fat, which is the very best that you offer to God. That's right. You remove it because it's being offered to God. To God, that's right. And then he says it is a sacrifice that belongs to God. That's right. What else? Uh, verse 12. And, yeah. and if his offering is a goat, yeah. then he shall bring it before God uh -huh. and he shall lay it on his hand on the head of the offering. All right, now to get down, get to verse 16 and 17, Sid. 16, get to 17. verse 16 and 17. The priest shall turn them into smoke on the altar yeah. as a food offering. Aha, uh -huh. as a what? As a food offering. So when the worshiper would take the fat from the sacrifice and offer it on the altar to God, it signified that the fat portions, the best portions, belonged to God and it was the food of God. That's right. It was to the worshiper when they offered the peace offering that says, I am celebrating a peaceful, harmonious relationship with my God and I'm going to offer that celebration of sacrifice to God by giving him the fat portions of it. And it would be to the worshiper that whenever they ate of the sacrifice, God was eating with them. That's right. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Watch it. What else? What else? All the fat is an offering made by fire as a pleasing fragrance, fragrance for to God. God. So now God says, when you offer the fat portions of the sacrifice to me, it's my food. It belongs to me. And I'm going to eat with you in this festive celebration of peace offerings. And that food should not be shared with anybody because it's God's and God's alone. God, God. So when you see Cain or uh, Abel in Genesis chapter 4 offering his sacrifice, it wasn't just the first names of his flock. He also brought the fat portions of that sacrifice to God, which says Abel had enough faith in an in invisible God that he would offer the very best portions to God so that his, uh, his sacrifice would then be accepted by God. Are you following what I'm saying? That's it. Now, what do you see in this? You've got to make sure you approach God not only on Sunday morning worship, but every day of the week yeah. with the right kind of heart towards God. Yeah. That's, right. That's why it's dangerous to say that, Fred, when you dress up on Sunday, you're giving your best to God. Because if dressing up in a three-piece suit on Sunday means I'm giving my best to God, then I need to make sure I wear that three-piece suit Monday through Saturday. Yeah. When you go cut the grass, put on your suit. Y'all mess up. Come on now. When 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 you when you go to the when you go to the, the beautician, dress up in your suit. Y'all ain't willing to do that one, is it? When you go to the grocery store, dress up in your suit. It is not about the quantity of your worship. It's the quality of your worship. Watch this, man. Here's Cain. He brings the, the he brings the first fruit. The problem with Cain, Cain has a heart issue, did, yeah. which didn't allow Cain to bring the best or the first fruits of his offering. That's right. Are you following what I'm saying? And because of that, it was rejected by God. Now, uh, he, what, what else we got? See, now look at look at chapter. Stay there. Look at look at chapter. 21. Stay in Leviticus. Stay in Leviticus. Yeah, yeah. Stay. Look at look at chapter 21. All right. We'll take it to get there. Leviticus. Yeah. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 21. What verse you want to go to? Look at verse 6, 8, and 17. Verse 6, 8, and 17. What does it say? Verse 6. They shall be holy to their God. Yeah. And they shall not profane the name of their God. Yeah. Because they are bringing near the offerings made by fire to God. Uh huh. Their God, which is food. Yeah, and which is food. Shall, uh huh. And they shall be holy. They shall be holy. That's right. What was the next one? Uh, eight. Was the next verse? verse eight. Verse eight. Yeah. And you shall consecrate them. Yeah, consecrate them. Consecrate them. Uh huh. Because he is 
bringing near God, bringing near your God's food. Yeah, He shall be holy to you, since I, God, who consecrate you, yeah. am holy. As holy. Now, verse seventeen. Verse seventeen. Speak to Aaron, saying, "Yeah, a man from your offspring throughout their generation, uh -huh. in whom is physically defect." Yeah. Shall not come near to present near to present your your God food. Yeah. Uh, verse 18. Ah, that's good. That's good. Now, here's what we got. Let me bring it, but let's just reel this thing back in. You got two men who came before God. Two men who came to offer sacrifices to God. Two men who came to worship God, but only one sacrifice was accepted by God. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew writer says Cain, I mean Abel offered a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain. Why? Because Cain did not come with the right disposition of mind. That's why the Hebrew writer will say, without faith, it's impossible to do what? Please God. They that do what? Come to God must believe that God is. So Abel, when he brings his sacrifice, he's bringing his sacrifice knowing that I'm offering up worship to a God that is. Oh, y'all ain't feeling me right here. When you come to worship, you got to start coming to worship believing that God is. When you come to worship, it's only God that got you here this far. It's only by the existence of God that he kept your mind from losing your mind. It's only God that opens doors that no man can open and closes doors that no man can close. Only God, your responsibility is to believe God is. Amen. And here's the thing, when I come in worship, I'm offering all of me yeah. to God. Yeah. That's it. Cereal grain offering, they were offering the produce, the first fruits, Brother White, of what they harvest from the land. Yeah. So when they gave to God, they were saying, God, I'm giving you all that I have. That's it. That's it. Consecrate my offering so that you will continue to bless my offering. Yeah. Cain had a different kind of mind, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to show it to you. Y'all yeah. yeah. stay with me. So he says, he says, this sacrifice was sacrificial. Now, the sacrifice, because Cain, uh, Abel, offered the sacrifice by faith, it also suggests that Abel acknowledged God as the, the, the blesser of what he had. Right. Amen. So whenever you come to worship, man, mm -hmm. whenever you, even when you leave these four walls, you ought to live your life with as a life of faith so much so that, man, your everything about your life is acknowledging yeah. your respect, your adoration for who God is. That's all right. That's good yeah. What happens to us, we oftentimes think, Sister Hazel, that our worship and our appreciation and our thank you, Jesus, ends and starts in the in the sanctuary. No, no, no. no, no. What, let me tell you what should happen today. When we leave out of here today, everybody ought to be walking out of here saying, thank you, Jesus, praise his holy name, thank you for his awesomeness, thank you for his glory, and you ought to still be shouting when you get in your car. Amen. 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 Oh, that's why, that's why. So Cain brings his sacrifice of the ground and Abel brings the very best to God. Uh, so God, you got to make sure you don't run the, make the mistake of thinking God is more pleased with quantity than quality. Yes. That's it. What do you mean, Fred? That's why some people, Christians, you tally up on how many Sundays you come during the month. They are now. They are. Well, and then you judge other people by how less you see them on Sunday. Yeah. What are you doing? You're taking quantity over quality. Yeah. You got to be careful that just because you didn't see sister so-and-so this Sunday or brother so-and-so that Sunday, that doesn't mean that they have abandoned the Lord. Because you can come, FYI, you can come every Sunday Right for every day of the every Sunday of this year, and you still have your service, your worship rejected 
because you don't have the proper quality Amen. of worship. Amen. Oh, this is a, and what, what is God saying? I'm concerned about your quality. Yes. You tallied up how many times you come to worship this year, but I'm talking about where's the quality in this service? Where's the quality? What does it look like? Can you hear me now? Yes. In other words, what is your faith saying right now? Yeah, yeah. Quality, quality as opposed to quantity. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said, now, he offers this sacrifice. He offers it um, because he had faith in God and it acknowledged that God is. Now, real quickly, uh, Deuteronomy said in chapter 26. Because whenever the worshiper would offer these particular sacrifices, the mindset that God wanted them to have was a mindset of appreciation for who God is. So whenever they offered these particular sacrifices under, under discussion, what would happen? The worshiper would offer these sacrifices out of um, respect and out of appreciation of the worthiness of God. Mm -hmm. When you worship God, you are expressing, or at least you should be, you are expressing to God his worthiness to be your God. Amen. 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 Ah, uh, on the flip side of that, you're also saying, God, thank you for being such a worthy God by allowing someone who is unworthy to be in your presence. Oh, y'all sitting here like, man, I'm about to jump out my That's it, though. I'm so thankful yeah. that God saw unworthy Fred yeah. as a vehicle that he could use yeah. to not just worship him, but also to handle his word. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's it. Look out now. You should be thankful that God is using an unworthy vessel to sing songs of harmony to me. When you pray a prayer before God's people, you ought to see that as a privilege and an honor that God is letting you speak to him on behalf of everybody else. Ooh, you hear what I'm saying to you? Oh, this thing. Matter of fact, man, if you drive the van, God, thank you. For let me go pick up your people to bring them to worship so that they can serve you. And if you cook in the kitchen, God, thank you for letting me have the talent and the gift to not burn up this food, but to make it palatable, palatable for everybody to eat it. Y'all ain't feeling me right here. Look at y'all messing y'all. Since y'all I hate you. So they hate the they trip, they trip. <laughs> <laughs> Deuteronomy 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, verse 5, see it, verse 5, yeah. And it says, uh-huh, and you shall declare, yeah. and you shall say, yeah. before yeah. your God, uh -huh. my ancestors were the wandering uh, airmen. This is what, this is what he says to them after, Oh, Jesus. Y'all got a minute? You yeah. got a minute. Yeah. Go to verse 1, Sid. Let's get verse 1 first. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. This is chapter 1. De Devitica, I mean, uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, yeah. Now, Deuteronomy 21. Say you messing me up, man. No, Deuteronomy 26. 26, 26 verse 1, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, when you come to the land yeah. that God, your God, is giving to you, yeah. As an inheritance. As an inheritance. And you take possession of it. Uh huh. And you settle in it. Yeah. Then you shall take from the first fruit of Wait, 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 wait. Watch it now. Wait, see, you read that too fast. When you come into the land that God has given you. That's right. right. You shall do what? Uh, then you shall take the first fruit. The first, the very best. Of so all the fruit of the ground. Uh, all the fruit of the ground. Now, watch, watch what the God is doing. He says, if I blessed you as such, then your giving ought to be as such. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It ain't just money, y'all. If I blessed you, if I've been gracious to you, if I've been forgiving to you, if I've been loving to you, and he has, then it ought to reflect in your life. Yeah. Right. Right. Y'all, keep going, keep going, see. Yeah. 
And it says, the first fruit of the fruit of all the ground all that the you ground. have harvest yeah. from your land that God, your God, has given to you. And see, that's what happens to us. We think our money is our money. Yeah. Yeah. When your money is really a loan from God who gave you the money to give yeah. back to him. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Y'all yeah. looking at me, friend, you don't understand. I work 40 hours and I work sometimes 80 hours. Don't care how many hours you work, it still belongs to God. Because if it wasn't for the hand of God to give it to you, right. you wouldn't have it in the first place. Right. That's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You man, you gotta get that in your spirit because sometimes you'll think that what you have is the doing of your own hand. When it was God who blessed your hand. Yeah. Watch it, watch it. But, but we're almost done, y'all. And you shall put it in the basket. You shall put it in the basket. And you shall go to the place that God, your God, will choose. Talk about, the, talk about that offering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. And you shall go to the priest. You shall go to the priest who was in the office in those days. With your offering. Uh huh. And you shall say. What should you say? I declare today. Yeah. To God, uh -huh. your God, uh -huh. that I have come into the land that God swore to our ancestors to give to us. In other words, I'm going to acknowledge to God that it was God who was blessing me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Watch it. Watch it. What else? What else? Then the priest takes the basket. From yeah. The man, yeah. And place it before the altar of God, uh -huh. your God, and you shall declare, and you shall say before your God. Yeah. My ancestors were the wandering army. Oh, this is getting good, y'all. In other words, I'm going to give you the land. When you come into the land, you make sure you offer back to me the best. Right. Because what I gave you was the best. Right. And now when you come into the land, not only are you to give me your best, watch this, but you ought to acknowledge your past. Your past, your ancestors. Yeah. Watch it. Come on, see. So went down to Egypt, and they, there he dwelled yeah. as an alien. Yeah. Two in number. Uh huh. And there he became a great man. He's talking about Israel. That's right. Remember when Israel went down to Egypt? Yeah. They were in Egypt for 400 years. Right. He says, now when it came to you being in Egypt, your ancestors being in Egypt, you went down there. In a few numbers. In a few numbers. And there he became a great man. But you came out a great nation. Mighty and numerous. Mighty and numerous. Uh huh. And the Egyptians treated you bad. They treated you bad. So while you were in bondage, in slavery to the Egyptians, you went down there few in number. But while you were in your tribulation, God was causing you to triumph. That's right. While you were in Egypt as a slave, God was also blessing you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Church, that's why you can't leave your trials too yeah. soon. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you can't leave those tribulations too soon. You know why? Because the tribulations are the blessings that ensue. Here's the thing. The trials, the tribulations are catalysts for God working his power in your life. So if you leave the trials too soon, or if God takes you out of them too soon, you'll miss the blessing. You'll miss the blessing. That's it. Israel was blessed while enslaved. That's right. There right. they were. What's your blessing? What else? What else? And it said, and they oppressed us and imposed on us hard labor. Yeah. And we cried, God, to the God of our ancestors. Uh huh. And God heard our voice. And he did what? And he heard our voice. Yeah. And saw our affliction. Uh huh. And our toil. Well, wait, 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 wait. When you cry to God, you you uh, you are crying to God about something he doesn't know about. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Jesus. Lord. When you cry to God, man, he knows what your afflictions yeah. are before you cry to him. As a matter of fact, Moses said not only did God hear their cry, he saw their affliction. So not only does God hear his children, but he also sees what they're going through. And he conjures up the right prescription and remedy to get his people out of trouble. We ain't got the three hand clap to pray. Verse 8. Verse 8, see, we better go and get verse 8. And God brought us out of Egypt yeah. with a strong hand. With a strong hand. And an outstretched arm. Yeah. And a great terror with the signs and the wonders. Uh huh. And he brought us to a great place. Yeah. And gave us this land. Verse 11. A land flowing with milk and honey. Now, what would the verse 11 say? Uh, drop down with that. Uh huh. And you shall celebrate with all the bounty that God, your God, gave to you and to your family. Hold up now. When I give you the land mm -hmm. that you didn't have before, yeah. 
that I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yeah. that I would give you when I give it to you. Matter of fact, I gave it to you when I promised it to you. That's right. That's right. And so when I promise it to you, I'm going to back up what I promised right. by my character. Yeah, you did. My character is credible. My character is capable. And my character is consistent. That's why you can put faith in God, or you should put faith in God in every aspect of your life. Amen. Because you are trusting in a God who's credible, a God who's capable, and a God who's consistent. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the land, right? I gave you the land when I promised you the land. That's right. Now that you're getting ready to enter into the land, I want you to give me your best. That's right. Now when you get in there and you give me your best, not only do I want you to give me the best, but the beginning of verse 11 says, I want you to celebrate. Celebrate. Oh, Lord Jesus, y'all making this hard this morning, man. All the when God blesses your life, yes. when God gives you increase, yes. you better start rejoicing. Yes. When God blesses you, because here's the thing, man, this is sure as you are blessed by God, yes. Satan is coming to yes. snatch yes. you away. Yes. And so you had better start learning how to rejoice now. Yes. So when those dark days come, yes. that won't affect you. Yeah. It won't steal your joy. Yeah. It won't steal your peace. Right. It won't steal your love. Nope. You'll stay committed because yeah. you are putting faith in a God who's capable, who's credible, and who's consistent. Yes, yeah. 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 All right, see, so we better get back. We better get back to this thing. So stay. I want to give you some more of this, y'all. But here's the thing: Cain and Abel. He offers a sacrifice, mm -hmm. but Cain didn't acknowledge that God was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it affected his sacrifice. Yeah, it did. Why was his sacrifice affected? Because his heart was affected. Right. Or should I say, his heart was defective. Yeah. 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 So you, and here's the thing, you can't worship God and it be accepted with a defective mind. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Yeah. You can't, you can't. Now, you say, well, Fred, um, I wanted to give y'all some cereal. Let me give you this so y'all can write in your note. So when you talk about these cereal and grain offerings, the first fruit of the ground, you just saw one was Deuteronomy chapter 26, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can also write down Leviticus chapter 23, verse 38, okay. and uh, Numbers chapter 18, verse 12, along with Exodus chapter 22, verse 29. Now, in Genesis chapter 4, the text says, Abel on his part brought of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. That's right. But for Cain and his offering, he had no Don't regard. That's right. So Cain became very, now watch his mindset. His mind. He became very angry and his countenance fell. Right. And he says, uh, Cain, right. Why, why are you angry? Why are you angry? And why is your face fallen? Why has your cap in other words, why are you pouting? Yeah, why you Come on. Cain, I've rejected your sacrifice because your heart isn't right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because your heart isn't right, you are not dis demonstrating a life of faith to a God you haven't seen. That's yeah. right. Even though this God you haven't seen is the very one who blessed you to have the fruit of the ground. That's right. right. So now Cain gets upset and he starts pouting. Mm -hmm. Now what, what happens, his mind is so defective that he lures his brother into the field and he kills him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now why does he kill him? Because you became jealous of your brother. Boy, mm -hmm. ain't nothing more distasteful than another Christian being jealous yes. of God blessing Amen. another child of God. That's, That's it. it. Ain't that something? That's it. Yeah. You can't, don't you allow, man, the last thing I, I want to be doing, if God is blessing Sister Hazel, I'm going to celebrate that blessing. Yeah. Yeah. If God is blessing Sister, Sister White and Sister Moore, all, if he's blessing his people, why in the world would it be incumbent upon me to be jealous of the hand of God blessing somebody else? Amen. 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 But Cain becomes jealous. Yeah. He becomes vindictive. Yeah. 
and he kills his brother in the field. Now, that shows the kind of mind he had. Mm -hmm. Now, I got to no, but let me see, make sure I don't want to leave off in there. So he says, he says, he says, him, if you do well, if you do well, will I not accept it? Basically, came if you stop counting and do right, yeah. right, I accept you, sir. I'll just say, I accept you. But if you do not, if you do not do well, mm -hmm. sin is crouching at your Sin door. is waiting on you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then it, it's, what is his desire? And his desire is for you, but you must rule over you it. You must rule over it. In other words, you got to conquer your mind. You gotta yeah. conquer. Uh -huh. Because if you don't, sin is waiting on you. That's what the text said. He said, Cain, if you don't do right, Sin is crouching at the door, and sin's desire is to have you. That's it. Are you following what I'm saying? And it, another way of putting it, sin's desire is to have mastery over you. That's it. He says, but Cain, what you need to do is master it. That's right. <laughs> Read it again, Sid, because some of y'all looking at me like that ain't in the Bible. If you do well. If you do well. Will I not accept you? Won't I? God is talking to Cain. He said, if you do well, won't I accept you? Your sacrifice, but if you do not do, if well, you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Sin is crouching at the door, and his desire is to for and you. his desire is for you. But you yeah. must rule. Over but it. you must rule. You must master over it. Yeah. Let me tell you, whatever it is that's causing your mind to be defective, you had better put faith in Jesus so that you can conquer it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They are. Oh, that's right. That's right. So now we got a man with a defective mind, which leads to a defective worship, which leads to a defective sacrifice. Yeah. Abel, on the other hand, believed in God that he couldn't see that he offers a proper sacrifice, comes to God with proper worship. All because his mind is functioning properly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to give you one more scripture about this fella named Cain. First John chapter 3. So you will know the difference. That's why God is taught. First John chapter 3, Sid. Yeah, yeah. First John chapter 3. Now, look. start at verse 10, I think it is. I know it'll be in the middle of his sentence. Right. But start at chapter 3, verse 10. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are evident. Well, wait. <laughs> well, John doesn't hold any punches, right? No, he don't. He said like it is. By, by this, the children of, a, of the devil and the children of God are evident. That's right. Watch it. Now, it wait, 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 wait. Children of the devil, children of God, is evident. It's evident. It became evident that Cain was of the devil. Yeah, he did. It became evident that Abel was a righteous man. Yeah, it was. Watch him now. If it's evident, evident of what? How? What makes it evident? Everyone who does not practice righteousness yeah. is not of God. Is not of God. Namely, the ones who does not love his brother. You, your, the evidence of your faith is seen in how well you love your fellow brother or sister in Christ. Yeah. That's right. Watch him. Well, this is the message that. You have heard yeah. from the beginning. From the beginning. That we should love one another. We should love one another. Not as Cain. Not as who? Not as Cain. This is the message from the beginning. That you ought to love one another. Not as Cain. Who was the evil one. Who was the evil one. And violently murdered his brother. <laughs> oh, what else is it? And for this reason. For this reason. Did he violently murder him? He violently murdered him. Now, in the NASB, it says he did this. He, and why did he kill Cain? Yes. I mean, kill Abel? In the Bible, in the NASB translation, because he, he, his deeds yeah, that's what I'm looking for, Sid. His deeds were evil. And the right. deeds of his brother were righteous. Well. Now, we got, now it answers your question as to why was Abel's sacrifice accepted and Cain is rejected. Right. Right. You know why? Because Cain did evil. Mm -hmm. Now, the Genesis text doesn't tell you that. It just simply tells you he brought a sacrifice right. to God and God rejected it. But when you read other scriptures, what you'll find is Cain had a heart problem. Yeah, he did. Yeah. His mind was evil. So church, self-explanatory, 
you cannot come to God, you will not serve God, you will not put faith in God, you will not trust God if your heart is evil. That's it. You will not offer proper sacrifice to God if your mind isn't right. If your mind isn't right, you've got a defective mind. If you have a defective mind, chances are you will have a defective faith. If you got a defective faith, chances are you will have defective worship. Yeah. All right. Y'all say amen. I'm done. Amen. 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 That's all right. Now, here's the last part. Hebrews chapter 4. The Hebrew yeah. writer says in Hebrews chapter 4, by faith, Abel offered to God a I'm better sacrifice, sacrifice. And came through, uh, uh, through uh, which he obtained testimony that he was righteous. That's right. God testifying about his gifts, Abel's gifts, that through faith, though Abel is dead, Abel is still talking to him. He's speaking to him. That's right. My question to you is, can you hear it? Yeah. Mm. Amen. 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 Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, how do you want better? <laughs> what message is your faith sending? Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. Because let me tell you, all of us will profess one way or another, we got faith. Yes, we will. The question is, what is your faith saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what should be the case is that when I profess to have faith in God, then you ought to hear me talking. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You ought to hear me saying something. So listen, it's not about whether or not you tell people you are a child of faith or want to believe or a believer in God. The, the, no, the real question is, are you demonstrating yeah. that kind of faith? Yeah. All right. Well, well, what does your faith say? Amen. Can you hear me now? So if if you if you got a mindset that's pessimistic and doubtful, that ain't faith. That ain't faith. Amen. That's that's a that's a tactic of, of the devil that's overcoming your faith. Yeah, yeah. If you start to think that you're not good enough, you can't. Yeah. Why me? Yeah. Always me. Yeah. That's not of God. That ain't faith. Amen. That's the devil's tactic of guilt trip he puts on you to make you think God can't use you. Yeah. That is not a faith. When you start to think, when you start to think, Fred, I need to get everything right. You don't understand my life and you don't understand the stuff that I've done and the stuff that I've been through and all of this stuff. That ain't a faith. Yeah. No. That's the devil talking. Faith said, God, I'm thankful that you just let me in your number. Yeah. <laughs> Faith said, God, I'm just thankful that you blessed me to live outlive some stuff that I knew should have killed me. Yeah. 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 That's faith. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Faith, faith said, so you look, look, when fear, right? I, I fear and, and apprehension to live for God a full life, that ain't faith. No, I know. That's that's the tactic of the devil that's overcoming your mind. Mm -hmm. right. You hear what I'm saying to you? That ain't a faith. Faith says, you know what? No matter comes what comes my way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tread this, I'm gonna walk with my Lord. That's it. Yeah. Faith says, watch this. Faith says, I'm gonna do what Peter did. When God, when he saw Jesus walking on water, you remember what Peter did? Peter right. said, Lord, bid me to come. Yeah. And God said, Well, come on. Right. Now homies was probably saying, dog, that's a lot of water. <laughs> man, man, this water is deep. And you want to walk out here? And Peter said, I'm coming. Yeah. Because Peter at that point had enough faith to say, God can give me the power to walk over the very thing that should have sunk me. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. Faith yeah. is the evidence of That's things. Right. It's the substance of things hoped for. But it's the evidence of what you can't see. What you can't see. That's it. What are you putting your faith in? That's the thing. That's the thing. Is it God? Watch this. God is the is the primitive cause of your faith. Yes, he will be. Jesus is the perfecter of your faith. Mm -hmm. He's the sacrificial cause of it. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of faith. Yep. 
You come through him by his word. You mm -hmm. obey, and it's the Holy Spirit who, who convicts yeah. a man's yeah. heart. That's right. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By faith, man. It's oh, by faith. faith. Oh, Somebody faith. right now, I know, you sitting on the edge of your feet, on the edge of the seat, contemplating whether you're going to give your life to God. Your leg just shaking. <laughs> you just sitting there saying, I, do, I, I want to, but I'm afraid to. That ain't faith. You sitting there, matter of fact, I do. If, if that's you, then you grab the person's hand next to you and say, would you walk with me? Yeah. 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 By faith right. to say yes to Jesus. Yes, yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. You look, you sitting there shaking, you just don't, you, ain't had, you couldn't sleep last night because you know Sunday was coming and that you were going to have to make that decision and you were going to hear Fred saying, why don't you come? Right. Yeah. Isn't that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's by faith, man. It's by faith. Listen, you will never be successful in your secular life. No. Without faith. Without faith. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying to you? You will not be able to accomplish the things you need to accomplish without faith. Without faith. Listen, you, 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 relationships won't stay intact. Without faith. You hear what I'm saying to you? Marriages won't last without faith. Right. You hear what I'm saying to you? It took a lot of faith for Bob to stay with me this time. This time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen, Sister Paul. Amen. <laughs> Y'all ain't laughing. Y'all ain't smiling. Y'all just mad this morning, man. Lord have mercy. All right, all right. I'm gonna let you go. But if you so, if there's someone here who has yet to obey the gospel, mm -hmm. then you gotta come by faith. You gotta come by faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Then you got to come believing that Jesus is. Just like God the Father is the same to yesterday, today, and forever, so is Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. You got to come believing that Jesus is. What is he? He's the Savior of the entire world. Right. Who is he? He is the matchless Son of God who walked this earth. Uh, for 33 and a half years, mm -hmm. gave his life on the cross, uh, Brother White, and then said, Lord, forgive all of them, for they know not what they are doing. That's the same Jesus who gave sight to the blind, same Jesus that allowed people who were deaf to hear. It's the same Jesus that empowered Peter to walk on water. It's the same Jesus that said, if you don't believe me, I'll take uh, two fish and five loaves, feed 5,000 loaves. It's that same Jesus who said, if you still don't believe me, I'll go to a man's grave who had been dead four yeah. days in John chapter 11 and I'll raise him up four days later. That's that Jesus. He said, and then I'll do you one better. I'll die. I'll give my life on the cross. Let Joseph bury me and watch my father raise me three days. Yeah. That's, That's the same Jesus. Yeah. You ought to put faith in. Yeah. Same Jesus. And, and then say, you know what? I'm going to turn. Right? I, I don't want to have the kind of mind Cain had. No, no. So I'm going to repent. I'm going to turn. Repent. Ain't, we ain't talking about what you say. Yeah. Repentance is what yeah. you do. Right. Yeah. Repentance yeah. is a change of mind. Right. Right? right? Which leads to a change of behavior. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Change, man. Turn. And then be baptized yes. for the forgiveness of your sin. Right. Jesus yes. says, He that believeth and, 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 and that shall what? Belief and baptism equals salvation. That's it. Won't you come? You've been letting the devil attack your faith too long. You've been letting him have wreak havoc on your heart. Yep. That you you've been so bombarded with life and the struggles of life. That man, you've been struggling to even sing songs mm -hmm. in worship. In worship. Yep. Struggling. To just close your eyes and pray to God. Your mind is so clouded with trouble mm -hmm. that you can't even focus on the things of God. Right. That's real, y'all. That's real. That happens to people. That happens to us. Yeah. You're going through so much that you don't know what you don't know what's. Matter of fact, some people oftentimes look for bad mm -hmm. instead of trusting in God. Right. You know how I know that? Because that was me. You turn and turn, you turn, you, you're like, okay, what's next? Knew it was coming. What's coming next? <laughs> that ain't no way to live for God. No, sir. Now, no, no, y'all hear what I'm saying to you? God was not, he wants you to live an abundant life. Yeah. Right? 
So listen, it's time to release whatever it is you got on your heart. It's time to give that stuff over to Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you need prayer, uh, uh, we're going to pray for you, right? If you're online and you need prayer, we're going to pray for you. Send your prayer request in. We're going to pray for you. We look, man, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. We've got Amen. quite a bit to also yeah. be prayerful about. Amen. Amen. Right. And then you might need, you say, Fred, it wasn't nothing I did or said wrong. I just need God to strengthen my faith. Yes. Amen. Yeah. I just need him to build my right. trust in oh, him. Amen. And you know he'll do it. He'll do it. Yeah. Here's why he'll do it. Because he's credible, yeah. capable, and consistent. Yeah. Yes. Won't you come? Hey, you got who got the song? You got the song? What the song? 876. All right, yeah, 876. Put it on the screen. 876. Y'all come and respond to God if need be, as together we stand and sing the invitation song. <laughs> 